everyone it's jessica from blooming with jess and today i'm going to be showing you how i prepare my new purchases to go in with my collection so i just picked these up at lowe's i got them for a steal in my opinion this sibu blue look at it very full was only 19.98 and this philodendron birkin was 14.98 and it came in one of these ceramic pots they're both from costa farms i see some birkins that <laughs> were way more, way more expensive because of the pot that it was in so i just picked this up i don't i don't care for the pot i just want to get it at a good price now i don't know if they if the propagation method is different or the growth method is different why some are cheaper than some but i just picked this up it's very beautiful look at it look at this new leaf look at this new leaf very pretty and this cebu blue so i am going to be preparing them to go in with my collection no i don't usually quarantine it's recommended that you quarantine your plants for a while but i don't i just prepare them as a matter of fact i never used to prepare them you know sometimes i don't have the time or sometimes i got lazy and i would put it in with my collection and ever since i had a thrip outbreak i started preparing them this way that i'm going to be showing you today so stay tuned this is what i'm going to be using to prepare them i have had great success using this to get rid of my thrips so i'm going to be using this to prepare these plants i get the concentrate because it works out better you know if you have a large collection i highly recommend getting the concentrate because you only use two tablespoons i believe for this 32 ounce bottle and you pay like I think this is like nine dollars something this is like 20 something and i've already used i've already filled this up like five times already <laughs> and this is still pretty full so i highly recommend getting a concentrate and mix it out in a spray bottle or i already had this because i bought this first to try it to see it worked and i liked it and when it was finished i got this and i just continue using the bottle to fill up this water two tablespoons and that's it so that's what i'm gonna be doing today okay so i am now in my bathroom and i am going to be washing this with this you can wash it first at the, the pipe and you could even use insecticide also if you you like you could do that first and then you could do this but i'm just going to go straight ahead and do this because this is not a full foliage so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wash it with the captain's jack and then i'm going to just go in with this leaf shine afterwards after it's dry and then clean it with a paper towel and so i get the miracle grow leaf shine and then i put a little bit of neem oil so you know that will take care of any residual and then i'll, I'll watch the plant and if i see it going downhill or i see any signs of uh, new or any pest damage or um, any pest at all i will go in with this again maybe a week from now it just depends on how the plant does so let's get started now you could use you could use gloves i don't i just go in and i wash it and i spray the leaves one by one and i scrub it i like to scrub it like this scrub it especially for thrift i like to go in and scrub it so any any eggs that are laid in it i just rub it in yeah that's how i do it but especially for thrift now i don't see any spider mites or anything like that but i do see some little dots that could be thrift so i'm gonna definitely wash it properly you know like i said i i myself was battling thrift and i think maybe 90 percent of it is eradicated i'm not really seeing any new thrip damage on my plants but i still go in and check each of each and every one of them so i'm not too worried about putting these in to infect my collection because like i said i'm still monitoring my collection for thrip and acting you know as i see fit so i'm just gonna go in and continue to wash it 
get in the front and the backs of the leaves. Every single leaf, especially the back. That's where pests love to hide. Now you see why the concentrate works out? Because I use this generously. I don't skimp on it. Another reason why I don't want to um, use the water is because I don't want to put any more water in the soil. It feels, you know, a tad bit heavier and it's a little bit moist and it's a peaty mixture. So I don't want to get it any more saturated. I want it to dry out. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm thoroughly washing it, thoroughly washing it back and front and this works like I said if you already have vitamite thrip it works very well and scrubbing the leaves works very well because you're gonna physically remove the pest especially these lower leaves you want to get them get down in there because thrip um, one of the stages go one of the life cycles goes into the the soil and for that reason I spray the soil after I'm done with the leaves and that is why sometimes you may have to repeat this treatment as well because the ones that are in the soil will come up sometimes if they survive and and um, come back on the plant so what I, I generally generously spray the top as well I know some people read some people read pot it but I'm gonna let it acclimate and see how it does and if needs be I'll repot it into a better mixture if I see the health of the plant declining so let me just put it back in the pot let it dry and then I'm gonna go in with the leaf shine but in the meantime while that dries I'm gonna go get the sea blue now for the sea blue I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different because this is a fuller plant and pests can be hiding in the little crevices all over on the soil that I can't see like you can see it's very full and not only that it is very light so it needs a thorough watering uh, as you can see look how dry look oh I don't know if you can see it. look how dry it is so I'm gonna be using this on the highest setting and spray it down really really good wash the leaves and water at the same time then afterwards I'm gonna go in with the captain's jack all right all right so let's go if you have an outdoor hose you could do this outside but I live in an apartment so I have to do this in my tub or the shower all right, so this is a very high screen. this will get rid of this will physically get rid of pests to show sure that the water is not too hot the plants are feeling too. <laughs> Turn the leaves over and make sure that I'm washing it really well. very dry so yeah it's heavy so it's it could take a good drink so I'm fine with that so now I'm gonna go in with the Captain Jack and spray it down <laughs> it's finishing up It's a little bit harder to get every single leaf with this, so I'm going to try my best. Alright, so I'm going to let that sit in here and drain a little, the excess water out of it. Drain before I put it where I'm going to put it. 
where I'm going to be putting the Cebu Blue is going to technically be by itself so I don't have to even worry too much about it contaminating my other plants because it's going to be by itself. Once it's dry, I'm going to show you where I'm going to put it. Whew, I'm out of breath from all that cleaning up. Even the Birkin, even though it's going to be with my other collection, it's not going to be touching any other plant. So it's still going to be kind of isolated. So yeah, I'm going to let those dry. Also, for the Cebu Blue, I'm not going to be doing the leaf shine. I am just going to let it be and watch it for pests as time goes by. I'm going to go in now and do the leaf shine on the Birkin. Alright, so I'm going to go in and shine these leaves one by one and the added benefit of doing this on a plant like a philodendron birkin is that the leaves are going to be shiny and gorgeous bottom leaves will last because dirt oftentimes get on the paper towel so the extreme bottom leaves I leave for last all right look at it look how shiny and beautiful it is now another thing if there's like a leaf that is showing signs that it may have some damage uh, or some pest I will take it off so for example this one right here like you see it's obvious and it's a lower leaf too so I'm gonna pluck that out like so yeah I just take it out and throw it away yeah so it looks like it has some thrift damage so I'm not taking any chances so this is where I plan to put my Birkin I'm gonna put it there and see how it looks and then I'll decide but that's where I want to put it for now. So this is where I have the Birkin. I did change out the pot to one of the the other Custoform pots. And um, look at it. So like I said, it's not touching anything. Even though I think they say thrip could fly or like leap. But <laughs> it's just kind of by itself. And as time goes by and I watch how it's doing, it acclimates to my condition and I'm positive that it's good, then I may move it around <laughs> and see where it looks better and where it, if it's not doing good there, then obviously I have to move it. But it's on the shelf that I run my diffuser that gives this shelf humidity with my Calathea and my alocasia so this shelf gets humidity so i put it on that shelf where i run that like i said so yeah that's it for the birkin i'm gonna go ahead and put up the sepo blue and i'll get back to you guys so this is where i put the sebo blue it's looking a little bushy and shabby right now but i i know once the it starts acclimating and turning to the direction of the light it will start to look better and i'm trying it out there like i said for the birkin and if it doesn't work then i'll move it around but for now that's where it's gonna be it is by itself so it's not touching any other plants uh so look at it I think it would look better hanging, but at the moment I don't really have anywhere to hang it. There's a hook right there. Maybe one day I'll try to hang it up there and see what it looks like over the plant stand, but for now it's gonna stay there. After it gets acclimated, I'm gonna eventually chop it up and prop it, and I'll see how it goes. This is where I wanted to put it, where that Agdeganema is, but I didn't really like the way it looked. I'll still play around with it or even in that corner where that um lemon lime oh my god what is it neon pothos is but I wanted something bright for that corner to bright to brighten it up so yeah I don't think I'm gonna put it in that corner <laughs> you see my son's party stuff they're still up but yeah um that is what it looks like so far 
um yeah i'll let it sit there i'll play around you know us plant parent we just move plants around as we see fit but that is it for now so guys that is it for this video thank you for tuning in if you learned something if you like this video give it a big thumbs up if you know someone who might benefit from it go ahead and share it and comment you know your strategies that you use to introduce your new purchases into your plant collection and if you found this information useful go ahead and subscribe if you're not already subscribed thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye